Braves need two more wins to secure the best record in the league and the chance to play more games at home than any other National League team this October. And at least title, check. Home field advantage, that's next. Mike Miner and the Braves look to take another step closer toward that goal tonight against the Fighting Phillies. It's a beautiful Saturday night for baseball. Our final home Saturday at Turner Field in regular season play. And the Braves had a thriller last night. They'll try to make it three straight over the visiting Philadelphia Phillies for a very big crowd at home tonight. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe back at it after an instant classic last night. Won by the Braves, one nothing. Chris Johnson's homer off Cliff Lee made a winner of Chris Medlin. The save went to Craig Kimbrell, his 50th, and Joe, that race for home field advantage throughout the National League playoffs continues to be very tight with the St. Louis Cardinals. Cardinals won last night, and last I heard, they were winning big today and shutting out the Chicago Cubs. So, as you see the score there, and they're going to the late innings of that ball game, 6 to nothing. I think Wainwright was pitching that game, so you figure he's got that taken care of. The Braves are then asked to uh, keep pace. You need to win, need to win tonight. Keep the record the same. And if you win tomorrow, there's nothing the Cardinals can do but uh, think about what could have been as far as home field advantage is concerned. So an important start for the Braves, an important start for Mike Miner, who's really had a rough September as far as the one loss is concerned. Yeah, he's looking for his first win this month. And while he's gone deep into some ball games, I wouldn't call it Mike's best work of the year. His last five starts, he is 0-3 and his ERA a little high. But he's given up a bunch of home runs again. And I think... Uh, as as much as of a concern is the home of the home runs are the first inning runs seven of them in his last five starts it's not good for Mike to fall behind because then he's forced to make better pitches to try not to make mistakes and then that leads to more problems so tonight if he can get off to a good start I see him getting back on the right track Ethan Martin gets the ball for the Phillies he's an Athens Georgia native who lives in Toccoa Georgia in the offseason the Braves have seen him twice before and they've hit him pretty hard it figures to be a bullpen game for Ryan Sandberg and the Phillies speaking of the bullpen Craig Kimbrell anchors Atlanta's he had a milestone performance last night he's in it's over indeed number 50 last night we'll talk about that as we continue from Turner Field next
Field. It's the Braves and the Phillies. Game three of four, the final weekend homestand in regular season play. A thriller last night, won by the Braves, won nothing. Let's not forget how the game finished. A bit of history for Braves closer, Craig Kimbrell, too. Save number 50. That doesn't happen very often, does it? Especially for a guy his age. In fact, no one's ever done it at this age. But Craig was outstanding last night. I thought as dominating last night as he's been in his last four or five outings. Recorded a couple of strikeouts. That was the final out of the ball game. And uh, I'm sure got the souvenir right there from Evan Gaddis. Save number 50, the youngest in baseball history to accomplish that, that feat. And the first in the major leagues since 2003 when Eric Gagne did it for the Dodgers and only the 11th time in baseball history. For the season, check it out, 38 hits in 66 innings and dominating with 98 strikeouts. He could become one of two pitchers in history with 50 or more saves and fewer than 40 hits. Gagne is also the guy to do that. So the Braves are very fortunate to have a guy at the end of the game they know they can turn it over to, and he turns the lights out. Relief pitchers who win Cy Young Awards are a very rare breed. Gagne did it once for the Dodgers. Who knows, perhaps 2013 will be Craig Kimbrell's year to take home that coveted piece of pitching hardware. When we come back, it's baseball time. It's the Braves and the Phillies. Game three of the set. Mike Miner and Ethan Martin resume hostilities when we return. By Toyota, by Sony Picks Captain Phillips, and by the Home Depot. Just about set for baseball on a beautiful night in Atlanta, Georgia. Good crowd filing in here at Turner Field. The Braves, about 32,000 fans shy of drawing two and a half million this year. So, you know, the Braves very excited and thankful for the support Braves country has shown this club in 2013. And they picked a beautiful night to come out to the ballpark. Weather absolutely perfect. Few puffy clouds overhead. Wind blowing from right field toward the left field corner. As Mike Miner and the Atlanta Braves go for their 96th victory. And their 56th victory at home which would tie a single season Atlanta record. 70 degrees, 55 percent humidity. Breeze out of the east at 11 miles an hour. And the forecast. Sunny skies, Joe, until it gets dark. <laughs> then what happens? Then if the forecast will be nighttime. Okay, thank you. And here's Mike Miner and the Braves. Got to get Mike going. He hasn't pitched bad. He hasn't pitched great. He's been kind of 
Tommy caught in the middle and as you said first inning runs and homers the bugaboo for him this month. It has been lately 25 years old 6'4 205 out of Chapel Hill Tennessee in Vanderbilt first round pick by the Braves just a few years ago he's 13 and 8 on the year an excellent ERA of 3.22 great number of strikeouts 175 to his 198 innings only a 233 batting average against him outstanding too. he has given up 22 homers and recently there's been quite a few of those but uh, as his Ford keys will point out here uh, the big bugaboo for him lately has been first inning runs it's like he hasn't gotten untracked until he's already behind a couple of runs tonight he'll try to avoid that early problem and then he'd like some early support if he got shut out his last time up uh, against the Phillies when he hooked up with Cliff Lee and got shut out against Milwaukee his last time out five to nothing too so if he gets some run support and then have the opportunity through the game to work on some things if he needs to before his first postseason start then I think he'll, he'll feel real good about himself heading into uh, the division series and this is the Phillies lineup that Mike will tune up against tonight Ryan Sandberg is the Phillies skipper Cesar Hernandez Jimmy Rollins and Chase Utley the first three Ruff Brown and Cameron Rupp is the catcher Cody Ashey at third base John Mayberry in right field and Ethan Martin the Georgia native will pitch and hit ninth. Cesar Hernandez was the final out of the game last night. Greg Kimbrell got him with a upper 90s fastball to seal a 1-0 Atlanta win. What a great game that was. Hopefully the same tonight. Bruce Dreckman has the plate. Mike Everett, Tim Welke, and Dan Bellino join him on the bases. And Hernandez pushes a bunt toward the first base line, and it's a beauty. A bunt single for Cesar Hernandez, and here we go. Miner goes to the stretch after the game's first pitch. This close to the line on the first base side, it has to be speed wise just perfect, and it was. Normally, it's a, an attempt to bunt it towards second base and then outrun the ball to the bag. That was just perfectly placed. And that one was too a very late call by Dan Bellino. Rollins has doubled two pitches two hits for the Phillies and minor in immediate trouble. Mike's given up 11 first inning runs in his last 12 starts. But even more than that, he's given up seven in his last five starts. This one on the chalk and right over the edge of the bag. Second and third on two pitches. Nobody out. And now you have to face Chase Utley. That's no fun. Utley at 283 with 18 homers and 68 knocked in. Chase did not start game one of the series went one for two with a walk last night. Popped up. Johnson's going to have a play in foul ground and three pitches, two hits, and now one out. What a weird start. Big out for Miner. Needs another one. What a hit. One hit and then a double. And against Chase Utley, thought, well, you know what? I'll just keep this rolling here on the first pitch. Not so. Darren Ruff is the batter. He's playing first base again for the Phils tonight. 14 homers, 30 knocked in. Ruff was 0 for 3 last night with a couple of strikeouts. He's struck out three times so far in the series. Strike one. Stop. 
And the count to rough now one ball one strike talking with Freddie Gonzalez before the game Joe it sounds like the news on Brian McCann's adductor strain is better. Yeah it's improving anyway. Hopefully he'll be good enough to get in at bat tomorrow. One I'm ball sure. one strike I'm sure that whiff of Chris's hat did him some good. It'll make you forget about your adductor hurting. <laughs> Two one the count. Some sweatshirts on some guys tonight. I see some jackets on some Phillies players in the dugout. Wind had been blowing straight in. Pretty much still is, but not as hard. Late swing. No long sleeves for Darren Ruff. For his name spelled backwards, Joe is fur. He'll be plenty warm tonight. <laughs> Pitch down and in. Now a full count for Darren Ruff. Tried to get him to chase something in the dirt, obviously, but bounced too far in front of the plate. Got a base open. Don't have to give in here. Make a pitch a little bit off the plate and see if he goes for it. Strike three called inside corner. Rough thought he had ball four. Instead, he'll take a left turn. Two outs. Right at the target. A little bit in off the strike zone that I'm sure Ruff would like to go look at the video on that one. But a big break for Mike Miner, who's one out away from pitching out of this. Runners at second and third after two pitches. Now he's got two outs in Dominic Brown. And low ball one. Brown's hit 27 homers. He's knocked in 82 men. On a corner, even count. <laughs> He's a strike away from a miraculous escape. Backed up a slider with a good curveball. Stopped there by Gerald Laird. Two in the dirt. Perfectly executed there, getting the glove down to block up the hole between his legs and then took it right off the chin chest protector and kept it in front of him. Two balls, two strikes. Cameron Rupp is the Phillies catcher. And he's in the on deck circle. Payoff pitch coming from Minor. And Brown popped that off the screen foul to stay alive. Him and the bases are loaded. That was close, but again, wanted it close enough to get him to chase. If he doesn't, you got a base for him.
So Cameron Rupp bats with the bases loaded and two out. He was called up September 3rd. Has made the jump from Reading to Triple A and then to the big leagues. And these three stops, he's at 258 with 14 homers and 45 knocked in, 94 games. Strike one. On the appeal to first, no swing. The count even now, a ball into strike. Phillies have had tons of trouble scoring runs of late, especially on the road. Miner hopes that continues here. And it won't. A base hit up the middle is going to score two runs. Hernandez and Rollins come home. The throw to third is going to be late. And Cameron Rupp drives home the game's first two runs with a two-out single up the middle. And the Mike's first inning troubles continue tonight. It's 2-0 Phillies. Boy, just when it looked like he might get out of it when he got ahead of Dominic Brown, 0 and 2. Couldn't put him away. And then Rupp just fought this off right over the top of Mike's hat. I don't know what Rupp's middle name is, but it might be Edward, and then it would be E Rupp for two runs. First two hobby eyes for Rupp. Cody Ashey is the batter and is down a strike. This might have been his first two career Major League RBIs. They are. Outside to Ashey. One ball, one strike. First inning runs, never a good thing for a starting pitcher, but especially so in the playoffs. He's got to clean that up. Couldn't do it tonight. Up left side, Chris Johnson will take a peek and won't have a play. Well, he's got two hits last night, they got three in the first inning tonight. Are off the plate into the stands, and Ashy's still alive. One and two. Which is piling up for Miner. He's thrown 23 of them in the first inning. And that's over the outside corner, a call third strike. A single and a double on the first two pitches of the inning. Then a walk to Brown. And then Rupp singled up the middle. Philly scored twice in the top of the first.
in the home half of the opening inning. They'll face Georgia boy Ethan Martin. Here's a look at the Braves starting lineup tonight. Jason Hayward, Justin Upton, Freddie Freeman, first, second, and third. Gaddis, Chris Johnson, Gerald Laird behind the plate. Simmons, Elliot Johnson at second, and Mike Miner will pitch in at night. Ethan Martin is a Georgia boy. He was born in Athens, lives in Tacoa, Georgia now, 24 years old, 6'2", 195. His nine games in his career against the National League East. He'd really rather us not talk about it. So he's looking for his first ever win against the National League East. It's his third start against the Braves this year. He's 0-2 with an 8.68 ERA against Atlanta. And it's been a while since he started a game in the big leagues. First your keys. His Ford keys tonight. Missed some barrels. He's got to do that to be successful. He's given up nine homers in 37 innings. And hopefully he, for him, he got some home cooking with a lot of family and friends here. His last start was September 3rd against the Nationals. Since then, he's made seven consecutive one-inning relief appearances for the Phillies. Well, you wouldn't expect him then after that length of time to go deep in the ball game. I'm sure if they get five innings from him, they'll be happy. And as we were told, it might be kind of a Johnny Holstaff type of game for them. Hayward shoots one past Ashy at third base. And Jason's aboard to start the Braves first inning. So Hayward continues his good work against the Phillies. That's our cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Rooters Light. Last 25 games, six homers, 17 RBIs in 25 games, and now doing a lot of damage as the leadoff man. Having scored 21 runs against him in those 25 games. And that was a base hit, as it should have been. Justin Upton bats for the Braves now. Justin hit third last night, was 0 for 3. And he's sitting on 26 homers. It's tipped and off the catcher's mitt, no balls and a strike. Ethan Martin has a good arm and was a number one pick by the Dodgers back in 2008 before being traded to the Phillies. Fastball 93 to 96. Slider, curveball, and a split finger pitch. He debuted against Atlanta in August, and we noticed a real live arm, as you said, but after a couple of innings, a real noticeable drop off in velocity. Yeah, we kind of attributed that to some adrenaline that day. But I think that's been kind of the history so far in his first six big league starts is comes out like a house of fire and then it drops off a little bit more into the low 90s. One ball one strike for Upton Hayward has a big lead and he's running and Upton pops one up to the right side Utley went to cover the bag that ball's blooped and it's going to drop and Hayward ends up at third base. I don't know what possessed Jason to keep running, but it was a good idea. I guess he figured I'm already a, a dead duck on the steal attempt. Who was covering on this? You saw him flinch, and then he took off. Oh, that was Utley covering, so when he's covering, maybe that's what Jason read and read it correctly and just kept going. Good base running by Hayward. So it's the Braves turn with first and third down nobody out and Freddie Freeman up riding a six game hitting streak. Twenty three homers one hundred seven knocked in. And a strike. You know the Cardinals are scoreboard watching. They may even be watching the game in their clubhouse. They finished off the Cubs today six two. Atlanta needs to win tonight to keep pace for the best record. Remember Atlanta and the Cardinals if they finish tied at the end of play tomorrow afternoon the Braves will win the tiebreaker for home field advantage in the National League. It's extremely important. 
Braves having 55 home wins this year. And Freddie hits one a mile high into shallow center. Rollins never saw it. Cesar Hernandez did. He's going to concede the run on a sacrifice fly to center. And Freeman has his 108th RBI. That makes it a 2-1 game. The way Hernandez played that ball, I'm not sure he saw it all the way either because he just kind of stood under it and he wasn't that deep. It was almost like, I'm just happy to catch the ball. I'm not going to worry about trying to throw anybody out and keep the double play in order. Beautiful early autumn sky in Atlanta tonight. 2 1 game in the first for Evan Gaddis. Now Upton's running and he's going to steal second. Easily. Easily. What a great jump. Eighth steal of the season for Justin. I like this aggressiveness. Hayward was running on the pop up. Oh. Well, the second base umpire, Tim Welke, pointed that he had his knee on the bag and then his hand and called him safe. Two balls, no strikes for Evan Gaddis, who's starting in left field tonight. Last night, he was behind the plate for Chris Medlin. And Freddie Gonzalez was raving about Gaddis's work back there. What a terrific game. Freddie said, I don't know if he shook, was shaken off by Chris more than two or three times the entire night. Chris with eight innings of two hit shutout ball. Win number 15 after a one and six start in rotation for the Braves. Well, here we are at game number 161, and all year long we've just talked on and on about what a solid catcher Evan is. You know, there's some question marks about that when he made the club in spring training that he was a an okay catcher, okay receiver, and I, re I still remember his quote in spring training. He said, "You know, I always thought I was pretty good." And sure enough, he is pretty good. I think he was grossly underrated in terms of his defensive ability. Fun to watch teams play and improve over the course of the year. I dare say he's definitely improved back there. No doubt. It wasn't, as you said, bad to start with. And low, full count for Gaddis. Good to see the Braves answering the Phillies opening inning jab with a counter punch or two of their own. Up to the second one out Gaddis up with a full count. Pop shallow center. Utley's going to track this one down though, and he makes the play for out number two. Well, here's last night's hitting hero, Chris Johnson. This, I, I'm still amazed he hit this ball. Well, anytime you try to drop a slider down and in on a right handed hitter as a left handed pitcher, you've really got to bury it in there. Chris was able to track that one all the way and basically golf it out. He'd be happy with a single here that could chase Upton home. Chris batting 324 for the year. Nine points behind Michael Kadire of Colorado for the batting title. Clayton Kershaw with another shutout performance last night. He didn't go the distance. I think he went six innings, but did not allow a run. His ERA is even better than it was. Is he in the one sevens now? Adam check. Kershaw. He's slumping, Joe. 1.83. 16 wins. Second in the league in innings behind Wainwright. And leads in strikeouts.
think that's going to be a great philosophical debate for pitchers, much like last year's AL MVP vote. It was Clayton Kershaw's year as dominant as Craig Kimbrell's year has been for the Braves. Kershaw starter, Kimbrell a relief pitcher. Out of way, two balls, two strikes. When you, you think you've got him set up for a fastball, in this case, a fastball away, he spoils that. He's been a spoiler all year. Martin about to make his 22nd pitch of the opening inning. 2 1 Phillies lead. Chris swings and misses and is struck out. Atlanta answers with a first inning run. That cuts the Phillies lead in half. We go to the second. Now a 2-1 game. All you long, Braves baseball on Fox Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. That is a beautiful shot. So is that. Big crowd tonight. Final Saturday of the regular season at Turner Field, where the Braves have a shot at going over two and a half million in attendance tonight. Here's John Mayberry. Time for our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot. And these are the guys against Mike Miner in their career, their numbers, and most of them not very good. Jimmy Rollins jumped on the first pitch he saw that set up the inning after a butt single let off the game and doubled. And eventually got a couple of runs in in the first inning. Fly ball straight away center. Jason Hayward says he's got it. And he does. And that's out number one. So John struggles with Mike Miner. Continue in his first at bat tonight. And a better start to the second for Mike than the first. Here's Ethan Martin, the pitcher.
That's a little low, one ball, no strikes. Mike, three balls and a strike. He gave up a run, a home run in the first inning, his last time out against the Brewers. Freddie Freeman makes a beautiful play to his right to take away a hit for Ethan Martin. Later in that first inning, he gave up two more singles, pitched out of it. Another hit in the second, another hit in the third, and eventually two more runs in the fifth. He lasted seven innings though and no walk six strikeouts. So it's like let me get my bearings in the first inning and then let me settle in trouble is opponents are not letting him do that. And that's a dangerous game in the playoffs is it not. Yeah you can't do that to your teammates to have to fight from behind against arguably the other team's ace or number two starter. He gave up three runs in the first the start before that in Washington. And lasted six innings, did not give up another run. Walked four in that one. One ball, one strike. Cesar Hernandez, a ground ball up the middle, backhanded stab, long throw, and Hernandez wipes out another infield hit. Perfectly placed, perfect speed, and Hernandez is two for two. Again, they weren't going to get him on the butt, they weren't going to get him on this. He's just too fast. Great effort by Freddie on the stretch. Elliott made a good play just to get it over there. The fourth Phillies hit, and Jimmy Rollins stands in for the second time. He doubled and scored. This one, though, popped up left side. Chris Johnson right on the line. Now in foul ground is there, and the side is retired. Gerald Laird, Anderson Simmons, and Elliott Johnson are coming up for Atlanta down an early run. Caught up on the wild card scoreboard in the National League. The first one's a big one. The Pirates beat the Reds and hit six homers today. They have clinched home field for the one game playoff between themselves and the Cincinnati Reds. And you saw the St. Louis score. They clobbered the Chicago Cubs today. And so 
the Pirates and Reds will play one more meaningless game tomorrow. Correct. In Cincinnati and then hop on their charters and fly back to Pittsburgh. And they will play a wild card game in hopes of advancing. One of those two teams will advance to play in the division series. It'll be Liriano for the Pirates. I think he's lost only one game at home all year. And Johnny Cueto is going to go for the Reds. Pittsburgh at home, 50 wins, 31 losses. Cincinnati on the road, 41 and 41. Bouncing ball by Laird. Deep short off the heel of the glove of Jimmy Rollins. He's had a golden glove for Philadelphia of late. We'll see how that scored. It's an infield hit. Wow. Only about to write an E down. Only three errors in the last 95 games for Rollins. And Laird will happily take that scoring decision and is aboard with a leadoff infield single. Ruling for Gerald Laird. Shortstop Andrelton Simmons is the batter. And he looks inside. One ball, no strikes. Pop foul back our way, and no play for up. Two balls, one strike. Stat that might surprise you a bit. We've talked a lot about all the multi hit games that Chris Johnson and Freddie Freeman have had. You know who has the second highest total of multi hit games for the Braves this year? No. Hamilton Simmons. Really? 41 of them. And he leads the club in infield hits with 21. This one bounced toward Rollins. The backhanded flip to Utley and the turn of beauty. A double play. Six four three and out. Nice job here by Utley being patient enough, knowing the runners bearing down on him, to not get in a hurry or not get antsy waiting on that toss from Rollins. So the base is empty. Elliot Johnson's the hitter, and he looks at the ball low. Joined the Braves on August 21st after he was waived by the Kansas City Royals. He's kind of like Jason in that it seems like every time he gets on, he scores because he's so quick and he's so good at stealing bases, he always seems to somehow find himself in scoring position. That one back to the mound. Ethan Martin escapes the second inning. He leads by a run as we go to the third. Utley, Ruff, and Dominic Brown coming up.
have an early 2-1 lead entering the top of our third inning. Friends, this Tuesday night, October 1st, come out to Taco Mac Lindbergh and join the Braves for a postseason fan rally. Meet Braves alumni and the Braves Tomahawk team and win great prizes like Braves autographed merchandise. Join us this Tuesday night from 7 to 9 at Taco Mac Lindbergh. For details, visit Braves.com slash rally. Business to take care of tonight and tomorrow afternoon, and and that's a good thing I think for uh, the ball club to be in the right mindset going into next Thursday for these last two games to have some meaning. All that's left to be decided is, of course, with the home field advantage, whom the Braves will play. They know they have home field advantage for the divisional series games. Which means if they clinch home field advantage, they will play the winner of the Cincinnati Pirates game. If the Cardinals have home field advantage, the Braves would host Los Angeles. One ball, one strike for Utley. And he slaps one to short. Simmons with a backhand. Loads up. And fires a rocket to first. One out. Let's take a look at one of those teams. Let's take a look at the Cincinnati Reds and, and what they present. Of course, they were in the postseason last year, won the first two games in San Francisco, and then got swept at home and got knocked out of the postseason by the eventual world champions. The Braves won two out of three in Cincinnati, split a four game series here. Reds with a lot of pop in their lineup. They've got some guys that strike out a lot. Made a big deal to get Shin Su Chu from Cleveland. He's been a great addition to their lineup. No balls and a strike for Darren Ruff. Obviously, that offense gives you a lot to think about when you play the Cincinnati Reds, but facing that offense in that ballpark presents a special set of problems, too. Well, the one loss that the Braves suffered there, it's not hard to remember that one. Uh, Shin Su Chu hit a home run off Craig Kimbrell. And then Devin Mesoraco hit a home run off Craig Kimbrell. The Braves had the lead in that game and lost it on those two homers. Back. They weren't back to back, I don't think. I think they were, there was an out that separated them. I'm not sure. One two pitch to Ruff. Takes low. Gretchen tells me they were back to back. But no lead is safe in that part. Strike three to Ruff. He turns and looks at Bruce Dreckman. And Miner has his second out of the inning. He's got Ruff looking twice. The key at bat in the first inning might have been the walk to Dominic Brown. Kept the frame alive for Ruck, who singled up the middle. The first two runs. Now Brown shoots one into center field on the first pitch. And he's aboard safely for the second time tonight. His first hit. It's going to be a very interesting offseason for the Phillies. They have a lot of holes on their ball club. They have a lot of veteran players that are under very large and onerous contracts and to decide if Carlos Ruiz is going to come back will be Eric Kratz or will they give a kid like Cameron Rupp a chance to win the job in spring training there is a starter or a backup now away for a strike Baseball America rates Cameron Rupp as the 22nd highest prospect in the Phillies farm system. He's out of Texas.
You put the Phillies on the board in the first inning. Looks like Mike might pitch out of some trouble. But a two out, two run single made it two zip. The Braves got a run back in the bottom of the first. Freddie Freeman with a sacrifice fly. Take a look at this kid, Rump. Physically, it's an awful lot like Evan Gaddis. Mm -hmm. Very similar build, very similar strength. And he's pretty thick. Three balls, one strike. Cody Ashey waits on deck. Miner's ready to make his 50th pitch. Rump had a good rip. Full count. That fastball the first inning when he hit it up the middle. So what they go to here, Brown will be running on the pitch. He is. And Miner missed badly. A single and a walk with two outs keeps the inning alive, and Ashy is the hitter. There's just something, there's something missing. Mike Miner in his last 10 starts or so. And and I don't mean that like he's missing a pitch or he's uh, that he's hurt or anything like that. I'm not suggesting that. But he's behind in the count a lot. Uh, he doesn't seem to have that attack mode in place that he had early in the season. And we bragged on how much he had really turned himself around, matured, and was aggressive. Didn't worry about home run balls bothering him. I personally don't see that same guy lately. If you were an ice cream flavor, it'd be kind of vanilla, in all honesty. Mm -hmm. The thing is, really jumped out for him in September. The results show it. He hasn't won a game this month. A lot of first inning runs, a lot of homers, a lot of hits. Same story tonight. Two runs, five hits, and he's still in the top of the third. He's made very good pitches to Ruff to strike him out. He got a, I think he got the benefit of the doubt on a call that could have been a ball in the first inning on Ruff for the strikeout. We made a real good pitch on Ashy for his. Called third strike in the first inning, too. The pitch had some bite to it, and she fouled it straight back. Remember the home road splits for Mike, but unlike Medlin, who had really not given up hardly anything home run wise only four of his 18 at home 14 of Mike's 22 have been at home which is an oddity but he made a good sequence of pitches to take care of Cody Ashy and strand two more Phillies in the third inning Mike will grab the bat himself and he'll go to work down a run early at home tonight.
You can see the fans out for the final home weekend. Perfect weather. Georgia Tech played their football game earlier in the week. Bulldogs up in Athens finished off LSU a few moments ago. It was like the second biggest win in the country today, wasn't it? There's probably the second biggest win in this booth. Yes. <laughs> Congrats to the Boomer Sooners. Or is it Boomer Sooner? I forgot. No, that's either way. Sooner. Singular. But it, it really was a, an historic win for yeah, Oklahoma. Yeah, the second time OU's ever beaten Notre Dame. Like a drum, anyway. <laughs> My partner even wore his special Go Oklahoma shoes tonight for the game. Support his squad. As Mike swings and misses, two balls, two strikes. Well, the way to go, dogs. Take that, Les Miles. Had him all the way. 44, 41. As Martin misses high, three balls, two strikes. Young Ethan has a good arm, but as we showed you, told you earlier. His velocity at times will drop off as a pop up is headed to the stands. And as his fastballs get slower, the opponent's bats get quicker. He really gets punished the second time and third time through a lineup. When well, he went through a stretch with three of four batters, he fell behind 2 and 0. Oh. He's walked 25 guys in 37 innings coming into the start. And you can see the progression through the lineup as that fastball diminishes. That one was hit at 94 miles an hour toward Chase Utley. And he makes the play for out number one. The Braves live crews brought you unbeatable coverage of the Braves all year, and they're sticking with the team for the postseason. Tune into Braves Live Playoffs Edition immediately following every divisional series game on Sports South. So here we go through the lineup a second time. Jason Hayward singled past Cody Ashey at third base and scored on a sack fly by Freddie Freeman in the first. Even count. One ball, one strike. Have to be awfully proud of how Jason's been able to come back from his beaning. Jonathan Nice. And when he's in the lineup, this Braves offense already extremely potent is even more so. I mentioned the remarkable numbers of runs scored since James Jason's hit the first on the lineup card. There's just some there's just a little hop in everybody's step when Jason's back in there leading off. There's a lot of confidence from his teammates that he's going to make something happen. He's been doing that too. Takes his walks. And he'll stand at first base with one out. A chance for the Braves to put a runner in motion and even things up here. Ethan Martin had a good year last year. Combined double A AA and triple A. Won 13 games. Off to a pretty good start this year in triple A. His last nine games he had six wins. It was six and two. And it may well translate to the big leagues. He's, he's got some pitches to some major league pitches. He's certainly got a major league arm. He's just got to realize he, with his command, that he's got to hit spots and not, you can't just throw 93, 95 in this league and not really have an idea where it's going and make it work. We talked about Jason makes things happen hitting first. The way that happens is by getting on base, obviously. You know what his on base percentage is batting first this year? Mm -hmm. 398. That's awesome. That's not including his single and walk tonight. And a line drive into center field. Puts runners at first and second. Justin Upton's two for two. A bloop to right and a smash to center. The Braves are in business again for Freddie Freeman. We started talking about Justin about 10 days ago about how he was hitting the ball better and he was hitting the ball uh, solidly to the opposite field. Even some outs were hit hard and deep to right field. Fastball right back where it came from. So good signs for Justin too. Both guys doing a good job of getting on in front of Freddie. 
RBI number 108 came on a sack fly to center for Freeman in the first. He loves the first pitch. Came up empty on that one. Strike one. He's creeping up on Paul Goldschmidt. Leads the league in RBIs with 124. Freddie and Jay Bruce started today's play at 107. Two balls, one strike. Phillies bullpen has begun to work. Luis Garcia is up and throwing. Freddie missed that one. Two balls, two strikes. They've got plenty of pitchers. No risk of running out of arms down there. Tried to straighten him up inside and missed. Full count. Yeah, Martin wanted that one. Ooh. And he should have gotten it. Swing on the house for Freeman. And he missed it. Freeman strikes out. Runners first and second. Two away now for Evan Gaddis. Good breaking ball. Didn't get the call on the first one, but made an even better pitch with the curveball there. Evan popped out to second in the opening inning. I stopped by Rupp. One ball, no strikes. Center and Cesar Hernandez will gather that in and that retires the side. Promising inning. There's nothing for Atlanta. We head to the fourth inning, still 2 1 Philadelphia. In Atlanta. 
Martin as we go to the top of the fourth we check out our Home Depot tools from the dugout the Philadelphia Phillies have not hit a home run in their last nine games. And that's the longest such streak since 1989 for this club. Yeah Ryan Howard would be a good reason why they haven't since he hasn't played since. I don't know when was it June. I, early it, June when yeah. Let me look. He was shut down. But for this ball club not to hit a homer in nine games. Unheard of. Ryan Howard. Left knee inflammation on the DL July 6th. Oh that late huh. Seemed earlier. Now he may have been on before but that's mm -hmm. the latest that they have on their press notes. I don't care how good your team is when you have two guys like Ryan Halliday and Ryan Howard who make up so much of your payroll you're going to have trouble winning games. The Phillies obviously have done that. I don't know uh, if the Phillies feel this way and the people around their club but I think they're just a different team in terms of uh, intimidation without Shane Victorino and without Jason Worth. Worth became a free agent. Victorino was traded just prior to free agency. Well, Worth helped bring the natitude to the Nationals. There's no doubt about that. But they were multi-threat kind of players. Victorino could fly. Worth could run. All of those guys could hit the ball out of the ballpark. But in some ways, you'd say their offense resembled Atlanta's current lineup. With a little more speed, one through eight. Contact one through eight, and playing in their ballpark, and everybody was a threat to hit 20 home runs or more at Citizens Bank. Mayberry swings and misses. He's swinging at the invisible ball against Mike Miner. Good change up there. Mike's fifth strikeout. There's another guy that's that's kind of. Odd. I mean, from their world championship, but Raul Abanez. It's almost like everybody keeps thinking, "Well, Raul's older by another year. He he can't do this again." So he went to the Yankees, played great. The Yankees said, "Yeah, but he's a year older, and I just don't think he'll be able to sustain." When he goes to Seattle, what did he hit? Thirty homers this year in, in one of the biggest ballparks in baseball, yeah. right? <laughs> Casper Wells the hitter for Ethan Martin and a high hopper hit towards short a little confusion with Elliot Johnson but Simmons able to make the play. And two are out. I could have sworn I read somewhere that Casper Wells was going to be shut down for the rest of the year because he had a, an injury but guess not all hails Caesar Hernandez he's two for two with a run scored tonight tomorrow's Good guy. He's done a great job as the general manager of the Phillies, but they are going to have a busy offseason. One thing, though, they know they can count on. They don't have to completely rebuild their starting rotation. They've got Hamels, they've got Lee. Ryan Sandberg said Kyle Kendrick will be in the mix. They are going to have money to spend. Roy Halliday's contract comes off the books. They have an option on his services. And in his last outing, Roy Halliday did not look good at all. Unknown whether he'll be back in Philly. Braves finally get Cesar Hernandez. Three up, three down in the top of the fourth inning. Chris Johnson leads our Delta Airlines on deck trio with Atlanta down by a 2 1 score.
for the Phillies. And we'll tell you about that after we get to our AT&T U-verse trivia question. Tonight's question is, name the last Brave with a 200-hit season. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Chris Johnson has 165 hits for the Braves this year. And second to Freddie Freeman's 172. So Luis Garcia takes over for Ethan Martin. Martin went three innings of four hit one run baseball. Good arm throws hard. And a slider as you see there 95 to 97 for this guy. Been in four games against the Braves no runs allowed in three and a third innings. Two quick strikes for Chris. You know all about the injury to Ryan Howard. You know all about Roy Halladay's problems. I think one of the underappreciated injuries for this Phillies team was Mike Adams. Mm -hmm. He was one of their big ticket additions to help their bullpen, help get the ball to Jonathan Papelbon, and this hasn't been right most of the year for the Phillies. As a result, their bullpen at one point had 12 members, 11 of whom had pitched at AAA this year. The lone exception, Jonathan Papelbon, the closer. And Adams pitched in only 28 games. Jeremy Horst was another guy they were counting on to help. He's on the disabled list. And John Lannon, who had been with the Nationals, they thought he'd be a solid swing guy out of the bullpen and, and a fifth starter and he's on the disabled list. He did not pitch particularly well. All of his games were as a, a starter. He made 14 starts but obviously wasn't healthy. Chris has a full count. Rolls one toward third. Ashy's got it. And the throw to first in plenty of time. One up and one man down. Time for Georgia Power Energy tip number two. BJ Upton number two. Georgia Power customers can get $50 and free removal of their second working refrigerator or freezer through the refrigerator recycling program. Visit georgiapower.com slash refrigerator. You ever recycle your refrigerator? Uh, yeah, tried. But yes, we did just recently. So it's a good program. Here's Gerald Laird. No balls and a strike. Gerald got an infield hit to start the second. He was erased on an Anderson Simmons double play ball. And that's high. Gerald's excited about postseason play. He's been there the last couple of years with the Tigers and Cardinals. Headed there this year with the Braves. And count two balls, two strikes. Talking with Carlos Tosca yesterday about the Braves roster decisions that have to be made. Still very preliminary discussions about how the 25 man roster will shape up. Deadline for announcing the roster. Still unknown by me. I asked Bruce Mano about that the other day. He believes it'll be sometime Wednesday for Atlanta. As Lair tries to split the left center field gap, and he will. 
On a 3 2 pitch, Gerald Laird rips a double. And he's in scoring position, representing the tying run. He's two for two. Like a cutter, maybe, that kind of rode into the middle of the plate. He didn't miss it. Gerald's another guy who seems like every time he gets a start, he does something to help the Braves win. Either with a base hit or maybe throwing out a base stealer. So the real G money in scoring position for Anderson Simmons. That was a good offseason pickup. Inside one ball, one strike. They sure do give Anderton a lot of room on the right side, a lot of room between Utley and Ruff. See on his directional hit chart there. They don't expect him to go to right field. It's this one high in the air to center. Cesar Hernandez backpedals. He makes the catch. He loads up. Laird will tag and move up 90 feet with two outs. Cesar Hernandez did not make a, a throw on that ball hit by Freddie Freeman in the first inning. Attempts to make a throw here, but I think it, as we have reminded you, Hernandez is an infielder, a middle infielder by trade, second baseman actually, so he doesn't have that strong an arm. He is fast, and he can go get the ball. Let's see how Ryan Sandberg wants to play it here with Elliot Johnson in the box. Pitcher Mike Miner on deck. Strike one for Elliott. A little more pressure on young Cameron Rupp. The ball in the dirt that gets by him could bring home Laird with a tying run. Like that call, 0 and 2. Backdoor breaking ball that didn't get all the way back, but Bruce Streckman's made a couple of calls. He's had a wide plate tonight. He's been consistent on that. Some of the guys were talking about Dan Bellino's strike zone last night, too, for Leanne Medlin. The Dumps are hunting for strikes in the first or the last couple of games, I should say. No chance for that one. It was too far inside. The 2 2 pitch. Nice stop, full count. And the pitchers on deck. Yeah, no reason to get greedy here if you're the Phillies. Mike's got six RBIs though this year. He's capable. Well, let's see what they do with Elliott. Knowing the pitchers on deck. Strike three on a fastball. Garcia painted the corner at 95 miles an hour, and Gerald Laird is left stranded at third base. We're through four in Atlanta. It's 2 1 Philadelphia.
Jaguar game summary. Phillies jumped on Mike Miner quickly in the first inning. Cesar Hernandez first pitch bunt hit. Jimmy Rollins first pitch double second and third and then Cameron Rupp with the bases loaded and two out and it looked like Mike might get through it. I gave up a two run single to Rupp made it two to nothing. Freddie Freeman drove in Jason Hayward in the bottom of the first with a sacrifice fly. That's all the scoring so far. Mike got the Phillies one two three in the fourth. He'll have Rollins Utley and Ruff up in the fifth. And Jimmy swung at the first pitch again in the second inning. He took that one for a strike. A homer away from 200 in his big league career. Pretty impressive. Only 18 players in big league history have hit 400 or more doubles, 100 or more triples, and 200 or more homers. The first man to do it was Babe Ruth. This one won't be a homer, it'll be a pop up in a shallow right. Upton gives way to Jason Hayward who called him off. And that's out number one. That's pretty impressive that Babe Ruth had over 100 triplets, huh? I would have liked to have watched a few of those. I don't know if they were counting hot dogs or not, but <laughs> Luke Gehrig, Rogers Hornsby, Jim Bottomley, Goose Goslin, Joe Medwick, Stan Musial, Roberto Clemente among that list, George Brett. Robbing out Paul Molitor and Steve Finley among more current players to have accomplished that feat. Rollins a homer away. Here's Chase Utley. Hey, I went down and checked with Frank Wren on the uh, roster submission. Right, what, what the date and time? Yes, and you do not have to submit your roster until the morning of the first game. Oh, really? And in fact, he said if there was weather involved, for instance, if the lineups had not been exchanged at home plate yet and then you got rained out, then you could change the roster that you had set up before the start of the next game. I mean, before the start of the first game the next day. So if the pitcher had too much rest or not enough, I mean, or if you had an injury, then and all of a sudden the next day, that one more day, that you could add that guy back to the roster as long as the lineups had not been exchanged. Once they've been exchanged, even if there's a rain out, that's a done deal. You got your 25 lock in. in. Right. A strike to Utley, three and one now the count. And even for a wild card game, as is the case between every division in NLCS and World Series, where you can adjust your roster in between, you can likewise do the same between wild card and division. Utley broke his back. Elliot Johnson will throw him out. And that's out number two. Well, we know who's in the playoffs in the National League. That's not the case in the American. What a wonderful wild card mess could be. Well, <laughs> think of think of that broke. adjustment in the wild card, where you know you only need one starter for the right. wild card game, so you can kind of load up your bullpen if you need extra guys in your bullpen. Or an extra guy or two off your bench. And then when the wild card game is over and you have won, then you bring your starters back on the roster. Yeah, and if you lose, doesn't matter. Yeah. You're out. So here's the AL wild card chase. Cleveland with a one game lead over Texas and Tampa Bay. What Texas has gone to the whip. Everybody thought they were over and done with. So with one game separating those three teams there is a possibility of a three way tie mm -hmm. in the American League and if that happens Tampa Bay would play in Cleveland on Monday because Cleveland had the best record against the other wild card teams. The winner of that game would then play in Texas on Tuesday. Are you talking about a three way tie yeah, three way tie. The winner of the first game in Cleveland is, is in. in. And the excuse loser. Me, loser. Excuse me, you're right. Beg your pardon. The winner is in. The loser is who would play in Texas on Tuesday. 
as Darren Ruff takes a two out walk. Texas has now won six in a row. They're one game away from sweeping the Angels at something no one thought they could do even at home. And the Indians have won nine in a row. They have beaten up on all the teams they're supposed to beat. I, I, I know I heard a record today, I mean a, a number, and I want to say it was 55 and 18. Cleveland's record against sub 500 teams. Well, what do they say? Beat the teams you're supposed to? Terry Francona's club's more than done their share. That would be a remarkable season for the Cleveland club if they can hang on and make postseason play. We saw the tribe here. They were really dreading the portion of their schedule that saw them play the Braves and then the Detroit Tigers. They got clobbered in those two series. But then knew they had a very favorable schedule. A lot of folks have given the Texas Rangers some heat because they have the Houston Astros in their division. And the Cleveland Indians absolutely did the same thing to the Chicago White Sox that Texas did to Houston mm -hmm. in their division. And are doing it again to Minnesota. All over Dominic Brown. Bats with two outs. Has walked and singled tonight. Braves need a win tonight to keep pace with the Cardinals. A half game lead for the best record in the league. If that can happen. We will have a Sunday shootout here again tomorrow, the final regular season of the game, uh, regular season game at Turner Field. A game where if we start play tie with the Cardinals, the Braves win, they clinch home field. No matter what St. Louis does. Bouncing ball to third. Chris. Plays patty cake and throws wide of first. The ball ricochets into shallow right and is backed up by Elliot Johnson. A throwing error for Chris Johnson. I don't recall a time all year where he's done that. There might have been one in the dirt that Freddie couldn't scoop out or something. And it looked like he had him play perfectly well off the line. But that's the first wild throw from Chris Johnson I remember all year long. That's his 14th error. And now the Phillies have runners at the corners with Rupp up, and he's knocked in the first two Philadelphia runs. Chris is first error since the 6th of August. Is it really? I'm not surprised by that actually. But you're going to have to dig long and hard to find another throw like that this year. Jordan Walden is up in the Braves bullpen. He said before the game he was fit for duty after some extended side work. And that's a name we haven't really talked about, Joe, because the Braves need to find out what Jordan can or can't do as postseason play approaches. And it's like Jordan basically have to prove that they're they are fit and ready. And it can't just be. No, I feel better. I'm okay. No, it's you're gonna have to go out there and show us a little something because from the standpoint of the staff, Jordan came back from that injury and did not pitch well in his two outings coming back. I don't know if he felt like he rushed himself or not, but he's been out again since then. No balls, two strikes, and blocked by Laird. It's now one and two. Hey. 
Swing and a miss. Good Ruff. job. He's down on strikes. Minor pitches around the walk. And the E5. The Phillies strand a pair. Pitcher spot due first in the fifth. Atlanta down a run. Terry Pendleton before the ball was caught. Greg Olson is out there. Somebody carried him out piggyback. I can't say who, but he wanted to share in this. Oh, that's a beautiful gesture. The Braves have done it. The magic number is zero. The Atlanta Braves are the champions of the West. And that is tonight's SunTrust shining moment. The 1992 Braves won 98 games and finished eight games ahead of the Cincinnati Reds. Avery and Glavin All Stars. Pendleton a Gold Glove. Glavin a 20 game winner. Lee Bratton Smoltz won 15 each. So after the worst to first year a season before the Braves backed it up in 92. And of course that incredible National League Championship Series against the Pirates and then a six game loss to the Jays in the World Series. Full count to Mike Miner, who faces Luis Garcia. The Braves are only down a run. Got Hayward next, then Justin Upton. And Mike swings and misses and is retired for out number one. Only three suites remain available for each NLDS game at Turner Field. If you want to watch the postseason in the comfort of a luxury suite, don't wait. Only three of them remain for each National League Division Series game. Call 404-577-9100 today to secure yours. Wonderful way to watch the playoffs. Strike for Hayward, nothing in one year count. Hayward on base twice more tonight. He singled and scored in the first. He walked in the third inning. He had a good rip there, but it's behind, nothing in two.
That's high and tight. A ball and two strikes. He is seeing the ball so well right now. Stand back. He's, he's quick again. He's got his timing back. Got that look like you can't get me out. That's hammered into the upper deck foul. Still two balls, two strikes. Control has not been good, but the results have been. And a roller out towards second. Utley will take care of Hayward for the second out. And for a guy who's struggling with his command, that was a pretty good 3 2 off speed pitch. So two outs for Upton, who's two for two. Delta Airlines, proud sponsor of the Atlanta Braves. And can hit one underneath that sign and tie this thing up. You know, we're talking about these games of importance, and Braves got some work to do here halfway through the game against the Phillies bullpen. That's low, one ball, no strikes. Drive in a right center field for Upton. That one skips past Hernandez. He'll have to field it and fire it back in late. Upton's three for three. Two singles and a double. He's blooped one to right. He's hit one to left. And now he hits one into right center. He put the ball in play last night against Cliff Lee. Struck out once, but... A few guys only struck out once. What a good piece of hitting here. Fastball away and a good fastball at that. And again, he has been showing signs of really heating up over the last 10 days or so by doing just that, going the other way. Braves have the right man at the right time. Freddie Freeman with Upton in scoring position. Three-hit game for Justin since August 7th at Washington. Braves about hit the Phillies tonight, six to five. Upton has three of the six by himself. Laird has two base hits. Chased a couple of breaking balls tonight, but you, you like the Braves' chances against this bullpen as much as they've struggled. You'd rather do it against some of their middle relief guys and not have to do it against Papelbon again, but therein is the source of a lot of problems for the Phillies this year. This might be Garcia's last inning. He's due third in the sixth inning. 2 2 pitch. And Freddie strikes out. 
Inning over for Atlanta in the fifth. Still 2-1 Philadelphia the lead. And it's time for our Academy Sports and Outdoor Leaderboard. Tonight's topic is how the Braves have done against their own division. This season a 2.80 that's the lowest all time rank for the Braves against the East. Likewise their opponents average and opponents on base percentage. Pitching has been excellent since day one. A lot of teams can't say that. I bet after a rocky start for Mike Miner, he's settled down a bit, although he's had base runners in every inning but one tonight. He's gotten the Phillies third baseman Cody Ashey on strikes twice. Ashey in the midst of a three for 30 slide. It has sent his average tumbling to 239. The thing about falling behind early in a postseason game, it's not so much that the Braves aren't capable of doing it. They've got all these come from behind wins this year. They've been very special that way. But it gets increasingly difficult in the postseason because A, there's a little more pressure on everybody. B, you're facing a team that has probably equally as good a pitching or bullpen as you have. So when your offense knows, hey, we're already down two, we're already down three runs. We know we got to, we have to score four runs now to beat a Cliff Lee type pitcher. Makes it awfully difficult. Kind of takes you out of your game and your game plan. And you can come back to the dugout and say, okay, we're going to peck away. We got a long way to go. We got a lot of time. Well, you do, but that doesn't mean that other guy's going to cooperate. Right. Miner was ahead 0-2. Now it's a full count. And Ashy is still alive to lead off the sixth inning. And his next pitch will be his 100th. In the air toward left center, Hayward had Ashy played perfectly. One out for John Mayberry. Mayberry has flied out and struck out. He's the eighth place hitter for the Phillies.
226 batting mark. But Ryan Sandberg likes Mayberry's RFD. Oh. Hey. That's Michael Stutes. Get your spot due next. Speaking of RFD, Upton will have a chance to make a catch, and he does. Mayberry's out number two. See here, I was thinking about Braves AAA manager Randy Reddy. If he'd been called up to help out, maybe coach at first, you'd have look over there tonight and see Rough and Reddy. <laughs> this is a pinch hitter, Michael Martinez. With bases empty and two out. So Stutes will be the third Philly pitcher. Garcia, two scoreless innings. And a chopper up the middle. Ambleton got a good break on the ball and makes the play. That's what the doctor ordered. Mike Miner has his second one, two, three frame. He turns things back over to his offense down two one. to provide him with another run. We'll also watch and wait to see if we'll play the Pittsburgh Pirates or the Cincinnati Reds. The Pittsburghers could be a potential Braves matchup in the playoffs. And Pittsburgh Pirates have had a remarkable season. Their first winning season since Sid Slid. 92 and 68 coming into play today. An excellent bullpen and a real tough club at PNC Park. Well, the Pirates got Jason Grilly to finish up ball games for him. That was a huge plus for them. They've got good pitching. Andrew McCutcheon, an MVP candidate, and what he's done. And Pedro Alvarez, they've been very patient, waiting for him to, to come around, and he has. He's been playing very well. He's had a good year. His batting average is not real high, but his power numbers are up near the top of the league. He's won all the three games here in Atlanta and lost three out of four at ENC Park. Wouldn't that be fun to match up with the Pirates again mm -hmm. in a playoff series? Uh, you know that place, PNC Park, is going to be rocking Tuesday. Atlanta hopes Turner Field is rocking with Michael Stutz on for the 16th time. This guy's been hurt and hurt and hurt. He was in 57 games for them two years ago. Last year he was only in six games because of shoulder problems that required some arthroscopic surgery. Knocked him out. This year you saw only 15 games. He had some right bicep tendonitis that's kept him out. Fastball slider, low 90s fastball. 
I think they ran out of jersey bottoms in his size. I mean, he's got that belt cinched up so the britches don't fall down. <laughs> Wait, look at that. Maybe they're pleated. Maybe I should try that look. <laughs> One ball, two strikes for Evan Gaddis, Chris Johnson, and Gerald Laird to follow. Braves have had some scoring chances tonight. They're 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position so far. And it's even now at 2 and 2. Stutes is from the suburb of New Orleans, Metairie. Breaking balls popped up. Evan not happy about that. Ashy at third. Puts the squeeze on it. And Dennis is hole for three tonight. The bases are empty. One out in the home sixth. All season long, Braves baseball on Fox Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. Johnson with 0 for he's 0 for 2 a strikeout and a ground out. Six hits for the Braves, as you mentioned, Chip, but only one inning in which they have had more than one hit, and that was the first. Good idea to take a look at one here, three and zero. Oh. And Chris did. It was way off the plate. A one out walk brings up Gerald Laird who's had a perfect night. Gerald has an infield hit and a fourth inning double. Time run aboard for the Braves in a 2 1 game. His sixth two hit game for the Braves. Also has a three hit game. So seven multi hit games in total this year. And he can go the other way. Get behind the runner, maybe put him first and third. He may have tried to do that right there with that swing. Side out effort. Ranking ball hung up and Laird popped it up to short. Rollins drifts out and Jimmy's got that two outs. Dumped to Andrelton Simmons to keep the Braves sixth alive. He's hit the double play and slide to center. Stutes is the third Phillies pitcher. Ethan Martin, Luis Garcia preceded him. With five innings of one run ball.
Rupp's been pretty impressive and smooth behind the plate for the Phillies tonight. He definitely has. My Kevin Gaddis appears to block balls in the dirt very well. Well, if he needs to, he can block some with his neck. That's always an advantage. Mercy. He framed that one nicely. The ball one strike. Check Stutes is listed at 6'1, 185. I don't want his scale. No. He's got some. He's got some 235 pants on. Yes, he does. Two balls and a strike. And over the first. Anderson pops one up. Brown in left comes galloping in. And he'll make the play to retire the side. Stutes issues a walk and allows nothing else. And we're through six. The Phillies try to spoil the party in Atlanta. They lead two to one. Through for Mike Miner. Mike went six innings, allowed two runs on five hits, and he will give way to the man answering our first AT&T call to the bullpen. And it's been a while since we've seen Jordan Walden pitch out of the Braves bullpen, but he gets the first summons tonight. Well, remember he had the the groin injury that waylaid him for a while. These are his season numbers: 52 strikeouts and 46 innings. There was a stretch there where he went 17 outings and only was scored on once. And that was from late May through June 29th. But then when he strained the groin, he didn't pitch from August 21st to September 12th. And his last 12 appearances have not been very good. 12 innings, three homers, four walks, 13 strikeouts. So tonight he needs to show that he's healthy and pitch like he did in the middle of the season when he was almost unhittable. He's right. He is an extremely valuable bullpen weapon. He's got the top of the order. And Cesar Hernandez. That pitch missed up. And away. One ball, no strikes. Two hits and a run for Hernandez. He's in at third with Chris Johnson in case of a bunt attempt. 
behind his late 96 mile an hour fastball. First pitch 95. I mean, what a great shot in the arm he would be for the bullpen if he's okay. Little looper over short, and that's going to drop for Hernandez. He has a three hit game tonight. And that brings up shortstop Jimmy Rollins. And that makes it time for the Coors like freeze cam. Jimmy Rollins, first pitch he saw tonight, first inning, right on the chalk down the third baseline, right over the corner of the bag. So says Dan Bellino, the third base umpire, and set the Phillies up second and third. Nobody out. They went on to score two runs, and that was the Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frostbrew Coors Light. So fast man at first, Rollins in the box, and down a strike. Cesar Hernandez picked a bad night from the Braves' perspective to figure things out at the plate. He was four for 33 coming into tonight's game three. No disrespect to Cesar because I can certainly relate, but each one of those sounded like a wet sporting news when he made contact. Strike two to Rollins. Up and away, one ball, and two strikes. Scott Downs is loosening up in the bullpen behind Walden. The guys who were teammates in Anaheim. There tried to block it recovered late. Hernandez moves up 90 feet on a wild pitch. Well, that was a tough one to block too. Gerald did all he could. Insurance run in scoring position for the Phillies with nobody out. And Rollins singles to left field. Hernandez around third. He'll be stopped. Now he'll be waved. The ball kicked. And no look toward the plate as the Phillies get a gift run. It's three to one. It's a single and an error on Evan Gaddis. No RBI. We've been bragging on Evan and his catching ability. He's working the outfield, still has some rough edges. This was a case where he was already trying to set himself up to throw in case there was a play at the plate, but in doing so, the ball got way out away from his body and didn't have it in front of him, so he was not able to feel it cleanly. And in his defense, if it's anybody else running, probably except for Hernandez, they may not send him on that boot that was so close. But with Cesar's speed, he was able to get his feet back under him and keep going. Chase Hudley needed the signs again. Strike. 
So Walden has surrendered runs in his last three outings. As Joe mentioned, this is only the fourth time he's been out there since August 21st. And he threw one wide at first, trying to pick off Jimmy Rollins, who's around second and on his way to third. He'll make it without a throw. So a couple of errors for Atlanta in the seventh. Braves putting themselves in big trouble. A two base throwing error by Walden. After yielding a wild pitch that allowed Hernandez to be in scoring position for Rollins when he got that hit. A three error night for Atlanta. First was a throwing error by Chris Johnson. No damage done. Now the infield comes in for Utley. And a 1 1 count with nobody out. Chase is still alive at two and two. Last month, Utley has been awfully productive with runners in scoring position. 462 mark. He'll hunt down every RBI he can get today and tomorrow. He needs four more runs batted in to enter the Phillies all time in RBI's top 10 ranking. Well, bad for a guy that missed a month with an oblique problem this year. And he is really battling here with nobody out. Bet he did. Utley strikes out on a check swing. So Utley can't bring home Rollins. There's the first out. Darren Ruff the batter. It's a very big run at third base if he can leave him stranded. will have the eight nine and one hitters up in the seventh. Infield still in and a good block by Laird. Walton's wearing him out in this inning. Chances are pretty good. This may be Jordan's last hitter even if he retires him because Dominic Brown's up next the left handed hitter Downs Scott Downs is ready.
There's a belt high strike. It's three and one. That's bounce foul at third. Full count. Can't expect to be on top of your game and really sharp with all your pitches with no more work than Jordan's had since the end of August. Velocity's there. It looks like his arm's okay. Ooh. Nice comeback. That'll work every time. Ruff is out on a 96 mile an hour fastball. And a good call, Joe. You got Downs ready for the left hand hitting Dominic Brown. And Jordan Walden, after allowing two seventh inning singles, strikes out Utley and Ruff and leaves with something positive in his first appearance in quite some time for Atlanta. 3 1 game. Phillies add to their advantage. The Braves' bullpen back to work with more work to be done late. By Georgia Power, by Crown Royal, and by AT&T. 3-1 Phillies. They've got another big run 90 feet away, but now with two outs, the Braves have a lefty-lefty matchup working. They have brought on Scott Downs in relief of Jordan Walden. And this is an area of concern for Freddie Gonzalez and the Braves, and that's the left-handed relief. Now, Alex Wood as you know has been moved to the bullpen. He's certainly going to help give, give them some depth. But the reason for the concern is that Scott Downs against left handed hitters is giving up a 345 batting average against him. 10 for 29. Five walks nine strikeouts. So the next couple of days important to him too. To get back on track. And you'll get a chance to do that against the left handed hitter here with an important run at third base and two out. Four hits, three earned runs in his last two appearances, which cover two thirds of an inning for Scott. And he misses outside to Brown. One ball, no strikes. Some movement on it. One ball, one strike. You know, in some cases, you know, they when you come in to pitch to a lefty, the other team might counter, and bring up a right-handed hitter. Well, that's not all that bad for Scott Downs because he's got an excellent changeup that he can run away from right-handers that he can't really use that much against lefties. Nice stab by Gerald Lair. That one nearly got to the backstop. A 
run, two hits, two Atlanta errors, two strikeouts. As Brown bats with a two on count. And he was late. Another good sinker. Really good late movement. That's foul. Do it again. Two balls, two strikes. After all Gerald's had to do this inning, he kind of looked at Dominic Brown like, you go get that one. I'm tired. Yeah, I'm going to hang right here and I'll put a new ball in play. Two and two. And Brown lacks a breaking ball in the right field. That'll bring home the fourth run. He tried the curveball to start him, and it was one thrown at the middle. Plank broke way off to the outside, so he didn't offer. So I'm not sure where they wanted this one, but decided to try something other than the sinker. And didn't get it where they wanted it. Had it in the middle of the plate, and he was able to. Brown credit. He didn't flinch at all. He was on that. And yet another hit for lefty. So close the book on Jordan Walden. Two thirds of an inning. Two hits. Two runs. Two strikeouts. A pitcher's error hurt as well. And now Cameron Rupp bats and bounces one out towards short. Simmons will win the race to the bag at second. That'll force Brown. And sends this game to the seventh inning stretch. The Phillies extend their lead. It's now 4 1. And a half innings. Here's our Crown Royal game summary. Mike Miner got in some trouble in the first inning against the Phillies. First two pitches of the ball game. One was a bunt single by Hernandez. The other a double by Jimmy Rollins. And then later in the inning, Cameron Rupp delivered a two-run single with two out. Justin Upton has, a, has had a good night for Atlanta. He has three of the Braves' six hits. Here's how the run scored in the first inning. Looked like Mike might get out of it. But Rupp fought off that fastball inside, hit it to center field. Two runs were in. And then just moments ago, good piece of hitting here by Jimmy Rollins to left field. Hernandez was going to hold it third, but after the boot by Evan Gaddis, the run scored. Scott Downs came in after a two base throwing error by Walden had moved Rollins to third base. The single by Brown brought him in. So, a lot of work to do for Atlanta's offense here late, down three. Elliot Johnson, then Reed Johnson, then Jason Hayward. 
4-1 Phillies. The Cardinals have already won today. If the Braves can't come back, they will go into play tomorrow. A game back for home field advantage, needing help from the Cubs. Jake Diekman is on to pitch, and he is a tough hombre out of the Phillies' pen. Diekman's not allowed an extra base hit over his last 25 appearances. That's 23 and a third inning since July 27th. That's impressive. 17 scoreless outings in his last 18 appearances. Ninety three to ninety seven fastball. Hard slider and a change up. You can see from that delivery thrown across his body. He's probably giving lefties fits. Lefties are three for forty one over him since July twenty third. Three for what forty one. <laughs> three for forty one. Well they're only. Nine for 61 on the year, a 148 average. So the Phillies with a bullpen game are getting great work from Ethan Martin and two others so far. Garcia, Stutes now. Deakman who has yet to record an out. Braves got their leadoff man on each of the first two innings, but haven't had one on since. Foul away. Ray Johnson still alive, two and two. And that last pitch from that arm angle, that's that's not three quarter, that is low, low three quarter. That was 98 from this angle. Good take. Hard to lay off that pitch. Again at 98. I don't remember ever seeing a film of Ewell Blackwell pitching, but he had one of the great nicknames in the game, the Whip. Mm -hmm. This guy seems to have a whip like arm angle and arm motion. And you're right, a good take by L.A. Johnson to walk to start the Brave Seven. There's a the leadoff man on. Now it's Reed Johnson's turn. Really good to see Reed get a start last night, looked good in the field. Second batter of the game forced him to make a long running catch. He got his three at bats. And gets a chance to face a tough lefty here, which, if he's healthy, will be one of his roles in the postseason. And a wise take outside from Deekman. One ball, no strikes. And the Braves need Reed, as I said last night. They need him to be right. They need him to be healthy and have his timing back. Be tested here. Up the middle, Rollins slides, flips to Utley, and a first. What a double play. Another foot toward the second base bag, and Reed might have had a hit. Instead, it's double play. He was already diving, Chip. I mean, he was already really, his knees were on the ground before the ball even got to him. He was going to make sure that ball didn't get under him. Good play. Not sure. Did Chase have his foot on the bag, or was that a in the neighborhood? How about Utley with a bare hand grab? Let's take another look at the base. Yep, foot on the bag. Nice turn. So let's see how Deakman fares against Hayward, a lefty-lefty matchup. He's single and scored in the first. That run came home on a sack fly for Atlanta. Freddie Freeman with the RBI. A 
Phillies after picking up a Johnson and Johnson double play. Now look at Jason Hayward with two outs at a 4 1 Phillies lead. This guy's not laying his arm down and kind of and slinging it. He's still got. You know the crook in the elbow or his arm angle. He's still got some leverage from his shoulder. It's helping him gener generate a lot of speed, arm speed, and velocity. He just walked Jason Hayward. Justin Upton's three for three tonight. One swing makes it a one run game, potentially. Hit three homers against the Phillies this year. Ian Hayward have been on base six times. Let's see if Justin can make it a seven. Your body like that, you're going to that motion, that delivery alone is going to help create a little movement. As hard as he's throwing right now, it's kind of hard to get the ball to move down. That was a breaking ball. Uh -oh. uh oh, is right. Hayward, did he get back? He did somehow. That was an awesome move by Jason with his arm. He didn't have his right arm on the ground when Ruff tried to tag him. He lifted it up. Watch this. He's going to be out. He missed him. Great call there by Mike Everett. You see exactly what happened, and that is some trickery right there, folks. Great job, Jason. So a swimmer's move keeps the inning alive. They were back at first for the 1-1 count. Not for long as Upton swings and misses, and that retires the side. Jason Hayward left stranded, and we're through seven in Atlanta, where the Phillies lead 4-1. The letters in order. 
you get out of order, you got a mess. Took them seven innings. <laughs> <laughs> but they're out in force. And hopefully the Phillies will fear the chop before the night is over. Back to our AT&T Uber's trivia question. Name the last Brave with a 200 hit season. I can't. I can't see anyone but Chipper. I'm going to guess Chipper. Okay. I'll, I'll ride your coattails as I have all year. Let's see if Chipper Jones. Con, Chipper. Con, son, come back. Is the answer. Have we had this question before? Probably. <laughs> I think we have and we've missed it every time. Sorry Marquise. Yeah. Darn it. Somewhere there's an evil statistician slash graphics person laughing hysterically yes. at us once again. All right, we promise we're going to get it right tomorrow. We got to finish the regular season in good shape so we have a positive mind frame going into opening day 2014. Any chance we can get him to ask us the same question? We just. We'd probably be 50 50 on it again. <laughs> yes, of course. I think it was a trick question. Yeah. No way. It, it can't no. be. Right. As Anthony Favaro's on, 62nd game for Anthony. Cody Ashey greets him first. Cody 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. He's got a big long swing, doesn't he? Let's go. Um, let's go back to last inning. Uh, let's talk about Walden in the game. Okay. And Scott Downs coming in to try and finish it up. Freddy Garcia Gonzalez uh, needed to find out if Walden's okay. When's a good time to do that? You got a game and a half left, and you probably don't want to do that if you've got a, a narrow lead. And even though the Braves were down uh, a run. I'm sure he had, has confidence still that the Braves can come back against the Phillies bullpen. So you got to find your spot where you can use him to check him out. Fly ball to left. And Dennis surrounds that one. Ash, Ash he is out number one. So he gave up two runs. One was earned, one was unearned. Had the wild pitch in the air, but there might be some people saying, you know, why did the why did he bring in Jordan Walden who hadn't pitched? He needed to find out if he's physically okay. He also had a test there for Scott Downs with the lefty. Uh, those are things Freddie wanted to know going in to next Thursday, whoever the opponent is. And while you'd much rather do that in a blowout. With the Braves winning, that hasn't that hasn't really manifested itself since Friday when they was it Friday they won seven to one. Uh -huh. But uh, you know maybe Jordan wasn't available, wasn't ready to pitch Friday. Well, let's look at the offensive numbers for the homestand, starting with the Brewers. Game one, no runs, three hits for the Braves. Mayberry rips a single into center field. Game two against Milwaukee. The Braves three runs, nine hits. Kyle Loesch's game, no runs, two hits. Breakout game against Tyler Cloyd. Atlanta scored seven times on 12 hits. Last night, one run on three hits to Cliff Lee. Tonight, the Braves have only one run again against the Phillies. And that on six hits. They haven't been able to do that line thing. They haven't been able to no. get that line moving tonight. And they have left a man on base in every inning, but you just they can't get two hits together in the, in the uh, game since the first inning. Two double plays hurt. Yeah, three errors have hurt. Well, the Braves have had good luck against John, Jonathan Papelbon. They'll probably see him in the ninth. You can't always count on that because he can be pretty darn good. Kevin Franson's the batter with a strike. Man at first and one out. And Anthony had him swinging for defenses. 0 and 2. I think there ought to be a rule. Um, and when the next commissioner comes in, kind of like a varsity, junior varsity call up thing, they do this in winter ball all the time. If your team doesn't make the playoffs, 
teams that do can kind of add a couple of players off the non playoff teams. So I think maybe be a good idea if you're so inclined. And here to center. That's going to drop. Hayward tried to deke Mayberry, but John had none of that. Two on, one out. Where you can, within your own division, yeah, you can't go outside. You can go room. borrow a couple of players for a week. Okay, I li I'm liking what I'm hearing. Keep okay. going. No, I'm just, I mean, Kevin Franson's one of those guys that always makes me think of that because he's such a good pinch hitter off the bench. He's a valuable player. Yeah. Always gives you a good at bat. But, you know, just just two players within your division has to be within your division and then go get them. I'll take Cliff Lee right now. Okay. <laughs> it's just a borrow thing. Yeah. A base hit the other way by Cesar Hernandez. Mayberry around third will be stopped. The Phillies have loaded the bases. So three straight singles allowed by Anthony Favaro. And the Phillies threatening to bust this thing open. They already lead 4-1. What a night for Hernandez. Four hit game. He had four hits in his previous 33 at bats. Hit that one sharply. No supporting news on that one. And now Jimmy Rollins will hit with the faces full of Phillies. Aggressive early tonight, his first two at bats, one at the first pitch. Not so much his last two at bats, but a good at bat against Walden when he went the other way. He took strike one. Other job by Gerald Lair. One ball, one strike. Mayberry, Franson, Hernandez. Now two balls and a strike. Wood is up. He's up for Utley. Anthony needs a ground ball here. Oof. Rollins with a big rip. He was late though. 96. It was up and out over the plate, but he was late on it. Left-handed. I've always felt like Jimmy was a much better low-ball hitter. Typically a good fastball hitter, but better when the ball's down. And he went fishing, and Barbaro gets a big strikeout. Bases are still loaded, but now there are two outs. And Alex Wood will be summoned to get Chase Utley in a 4 1 Phillies game. Walden, Downs, and Vervaro in relief have all allowed at least a hit. Let's see if Wood can stop that trend and this Phillies rally when we come back.
are trailing the Phillies 4-1. Phillies have the bases loaded and two outs. Alex Wood is loosening up. Tomorrow's game obviously very, very important. It's the final regular season game of the season. Your Chevron probable starters, Julio Tehran for the Braves, Zach Miner for the Phillies. Zach Miner's a former Braves minor leaguer and top prospect. He's been through a couple of different organizations since. Julio Tehran, however, will be tuning up for his first postseason appearance, whether it's at home or on the road. We don't know yet, but he's had a great year looking for his 14th win. And if this score holds tonight, the Braves will have to get some help tomorrow from the Cubs if they are to pull even with St. Louis for the best record in the league. Mm -hmm. If the Braves do do that, by virtue of the tiebreaker, Atlanta would have home field advantage in the National League portion of the playoffs. First of all, they need Alex Wood to get Chase Utley here in what is a very difficult situation. Bases loaded, tough hitter, very postseason like. Ball two. There are some aspects of Chase Utley when you have those close ups of him when he's so relaxed down at the plate, kind of remind you of Adam LaRoche. Just kind of let me know when you're ready because I'm ready. Hands are so soft and loose, waiting for you to deliver. You know what he's hitting with runners in scoring position this year? Negative. 330. It's probably not all that surprising as good a hitter is, as he is and all the things you were just mentioning about his approach to the plate. He's clutch. Well, he's one of the better hitters in the game. Yeah. Good pitch. Boy. That could take two, three balls and a strike. What a difference. Three and one is compared to two and two in this situation. Oh, perfect pitch and didn't get it. Dreckman's been very good tonight on those borderline pitches of giving them to the pitchers. Deep short, Simmons off the heel of his glove, can't feel it cleanly, and a run is in. It's an infield hit for Rutley. It's 5 1 Phillies. A 3 1 count changed the whole approach for Utley. If it's 2 and 2, he's got to be a little more defensive to try to put the ball in play. I'm not sure that was as good a pitch as the one before that was called a ball. He's playing up the middle for double play chance. Too far for Andrelton to go to make a play. So RBI number 69 for Chase Utley. Aaron Ruff is the hitter with two outs. And he's quickly behind 0 and 2. Thirty-eight thousand one hundred seventy-one paid tonight. That puts the Braves over two and a half million paying customers this year. With one more gate to get. Tomorrow afternoon. What did Derek Schiller tell us last night? An uptick of about 5%. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's been a, for all intents and purposes, a wire to wire first place season for Atlanta. Fans have been, in, have been treated to a good club and a good year. The Braves have been in first place every day except one. That was April the 4th. They're in first place tonight, but trailing the Phillies 5-1.
2-1 lead now to 5-1 heading to the bottom of the eighth inning continuing our tour around the National League and potential playoff opponents for the Braves we haven't seen the Dodgers in a while and the Los Angeles team when it was in Atlanta was an absolute mess a lot of concerns about Don Mattingly whether he would continue to be the LA skipper but once they got back to LA they took off and ran away in the National League West Braves pitchers against the Dodgers this year 188 ERA outstanding work there Freddie Freeman Ugla had good numbers against them Lucille Puig had just been called up had played in one series before the Braves saw him out in L.A. and he had a great series eight for 16 as you see but Atlanta five and two against the Dodgers on the year and that seems like ages ago especially with the difference in the Dodger team. This is B.J. Rosenberg now pitching for the Phillies. He's got Freddie Freeman leading off the Atlanta eighth. In a quirk of the schedule, the Braves did not see Clayton Kershaw during regular season play. I can almost guarantee you they will probably see him in game one if the Braves face Los Angeles in the first round. You think? Yeah, probably so. Yeah, right? Uh -huh. Then you've got Grinky, then you've got Ryu, and then you wait and see. That's if the Braves don't rally. Or somehow wind up in a tie with the Cardinals tomorrow. Freeman with a start, a leadoff hit. His first hit of the night and extends his batting streak to seven consecutive games. And he's aboard in front of Evan Gaddis. Fans, when you purchase Braves 2014 season tickets, you'll secure rights to the entire postseason this year, including the NLCS and the World Series. To get your 2014 season tickets, call 404-577-9100 or visit Braves.com slash season tickets. Inside to Evan Gaddis. He's over three. Rosenberg pitched here Friday night. Worked a perfect inning. Had a strikeout. He throws hard, as you can already see. Mid 90s. Slider, curve, and a split. They're not pitching like a bullpen that's at the bottom of the major league staff numbers. Are these games tough to hit in in the sense that as a hitter it would seem you, you don't get any rhythm because you might see five different pitchers as opposed to getting a second or third look against a conventional starter. Well I'll, I'll say this I'd rather see and take my chances against five of these guys than one Cliff Lee no four, question. four times right. Uh, but think about it this way. Not everybody in the lineup saw Deekman. Not everybody in the lineup saw Michael Stute. So it's not like you're seeing all those guys. You're just seeing a couple of them. And you've got good scouting reports on them because you've seen them all year. Now back by Gaddis. Had a good cut. Two balls. Two strikes. You pointed earlier from the Braves' standpoint offensively, this game has not had much offensive rhythm to it. Base runners, base runners everywhere, right. every inning. Just nothing back to back since the first inning. And when it seems like they get something going, like in the second inning, leadoff man gets on, double play followed. Seventh inning, leadoff man got on, next guy hit a new double play. Off man's on here in the eighth. Let's see if they can parlay that into something more. Let's see what Gaddis gets with a full count. A shot passed Utley into right field. That is an encouraging sign, too. I can't remember the last time Evan Gaddis had a clean hit to right field for the Braves. 
Took a little off his swing to make sure he put it in play and he found a hole. To your point though, Chip, as we see that swing, fastball up and away from him a little bit. Gaddis, Chris Johnson, Laird, Simmons, and Elliot Johnson have all seen a different pitcher every at bat. So to your point, yeah, you can obviously see over three at bats and see different guys. It's going to mess with you a little bit, but you've got to be ready to make those adjustments. You've got to be ready to go over the scattering reports in the dugout before you get up there, knowing that you're seeing somebody different this time. I don't think it's any different than coming up late in a ball game in the sixth or eighth and having different guys being run out there in a close game. Chris Johnson had a good cut and fouled the first pitch from Rosenberg away. Chris looking for his first hit of the night. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout, a ground out, and a walk. Braves have had some big comebacks against the Phillies before. Can they do it tonight? Even count. Rosenberg can't get together. Stop by young Cameron Rupp. That saved a couple of bases. Two balls and a strike. Pretty obvious his defensive skills are very good and part of the reasons he's in the big leagues. He hasn't had to make a throw yet. He took that one off the bare hand. Sharply hit. Toward Ashy at third, he'll step on the bag and throw to first a double play. Atlanta's hit the three double plays tonight. Gaddis at second now with two out. All you can do is hit the ball hard. Take a good swing, hit the ball hard. Can't always guide it. Can't always. Hit it to the open hole. That ball was smoked by Chris. Gerald Laird with two outs. And an off speed pitch had him off stride. Strike one. With new life quickly ahead up on Gerald Laird 0 and 2. Braves pen. Gerald's giving him a battle. 94-95 running in on his hands. Keeps fighting it off. Might have been 
his split. I don't think he throws his split that hard, but you can see him going to the glove when he gets his sign to get it, get the grip on it. And now two and two. Hard to get one by Rupp tonight. I think he's sporting the orange nail polish. Be. That area right there around the plate, the way he's been blocking, is kind of like a, like a, I don't know, a rough arena kind of area. <laughs> Good swing. You're gonna hate his nail color. I'm telling you. Really? Oklahoma guy? Oh yeah. I think he's got the Texas Longhorn fluorescent orange work. Well, that's where he went to school, would I? Yeah. See it? Yeah, if I were him, I wouldn't be donning that these days. <laughs> <laughs> two two. And Laird, another good effort to stay alive. Fourteen blocked balls by Cameron Rupp. We only know that because Valerie Burrell has been counting them tonight. And a swing and a miss. The Braves made things interesting against Mr. Rosenberg, but a double play and a strikeout ends an eighth inning threat. Lack of clutch hitting tough to overcome. That's the problem for the Braves tonight. They trail the Phillies by a score of five to one after eight innings of play. Still an inning left, however. After our ball game wraps up, we'll join Braves live presented by AT&T. We'll hear from the skipper, Freddie Gonzalez. We'll get sound from the locker room, and we will take a look at tonight's highlights. Braves had some chances to score. They've left eight men on base. Couldn't string together any hits tonight. The Braves bullpen, which tonight has been Walden Downs, Favaro, Alex Wood, and now Cameron Lowe. Each of the first four men in relief have given up at least one hit tonight. And that's where the Phillies made their real rally. They got two off Mike Miner in the first, two in the seventh off Walden, one off Favaro in the eighth inning, and now Lowe will face the middle part of their order trying to keep it where it is 5 1 Phillies yeah and upon further review here in my scorebook I had the Braves leaving a runner on in every inning they in fact thanks to that double play in the second did not leave a runner on but they did leave two on in the third so it is eight in eight innings so low versus Dominic Brown Brown has two hits he's got an RBI and a walk Oh, 
what we hoped wouldn't happen from Mike Miner's standpoint did indeed happen. A couple of early runs and the Braves have had to try to play catch up ball all night. They got a first inning tally on a sack fly off Freddie Freeman's bat. But nothing since. High fly to center. And Hayward is there. And Jason's got that one out. Here's Rupp. Is two out. First inning single brought home the first two Phillies runs. And Mike Miner was in immediate trouble. Remember the bunt single by Hernandez. Rollins doubled on the next pitch. Chase Utley popped up the third pitch of the inning. Then Ruff struck out. Brown walked after Mike got the two strikes to keep the inning alive. And then Rupp singled right back through the middle. He jumps on the first pitch and hammers that toward right center field. And that's going to get down into the fence. And Cameron Rupp has a one out double. Set himself quite a night with the bat, with the glove. A slider that didn't go down as much as Cameron would have liked. That's what it looked like anyway. Well, when that kid was at Texas. Folks at Baseball America projected he might have been a first round draft pick, but his bat wasn't nearly as good as his work with the glove, as you mentioned. So he dropped to the third round, and that's where the Phillies got him. And who knows? Maybe they've got their catcher of the future playing for them this September. They do have some decisions to make about their catching core for 2014. A lot of great players taken in the third round. Round ball right side by Ashy. Elliott makes the play, runner to third. And two out. Third rounders these days find out a whole lot faster than they used to, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> two outs for Mayberry. In the ninth, the Braves will have Simmons, Elliott Johnson, and then we'll see. Anybody up in the Phillies pen? Yes. Uh, he was a moment ago, Mr. Papelbon. Okay. And still is. If the lineup gets down to the pitcher's spot, which is next, former Brave Pete Orr would pinch hit. He's on deck. All two strikes. Toward third, Chris Johnson's got it. And an accurate throw this time retires Mayberry and the Phillies in the ninth. 
Last call for the Braves. They're down 5-1, and they'll have to face Jonathan Papelbon. Simmons, Elliot Johnson, and then we'll see for Atlanta. And a familiar face will greet the Braves offense out of the Phillies bullpen. It's Jonathan Papelbon in his 61st game of the season. You can see seven blown saves there for Papelbon. He's had more than his share of trouble against the Braves. Getting back to last September, the Braves were down 7 3 in the ninth inning, and this is what happened against Papelbon. This guy, number 10, used to play for the Braves and hit a walk-off three-run homer. So Atlanta needs four to tie, five to win in the ninth. Andrelton Simmons, the man that will get the inning started. Andrelton hit into a double play in the second. A beautiful double play started by Jimmy Rollins. In fact, Rollins has started two nifty ones tonight. And put it back to the screen, strike one. I'm not sure Andrelton really wanted to make contact there. I think he might have just been showing that. To take a pitch to see if Papelbon could throw a strike and ball found the bat. That was popped up foul 0 and 2. Wonder if Papelbon will be a Philly next year. Earlier this season, he was very heavily criticized after saying that. He didn't sign up for this, meaning the disappointing season the Phillies had. When he came to Philadelphia, he figured to be competing for division, league, and world championships. It's not going to happen for him this year. Well, there was a little, I think, I can't quote Cliff Lee, but there was talk after his game last night about how he's thrown 400 innings the last two years, and none of them have been in the postseason. And, you know, I'm kind of running out of time. Mm -hmm. He even hinted that at the end of this contract, he would head back to his farm in Arkansas. Good off speed pitch, retired Simmons. That one darted in there at 75 miles an hour. One of the things that we noticed when we saw Papelbaum gone lost last in Atlanta was. How he kind of slowed his delivery down and telegraphed his off speed pitch. That breaking ball was a beauty there, but sometimes on his straight changeup, he kind of every, everything kind of slows down and you can kind of pick up on that. Well, 
Elliott Johnson, the batter, with one out. This is not a save situation for Papelbon. The lead is too big. He needs one more save for eight straight years of 30 or more. In the history of the game, only two other closers have done that. Mariano Rivera did it for nine consecutive seasons from 2003 through 2011. And Trevor Hoffman, eight years in a row from 1995 to 2002. He'd love a chance on the final day of the season tomorrow. The Braves to eliminate that possibility they'll try to beat up on Zach Miner behind Julio Tehran and hope for some help from Jeff Samarja and the Cubs in their series with St. Louis back through the middle Papelbon deflected it couldn't come up cleanly and Elliot Johnson's aboard an infield hit on him pretty quick one hopper and the way he falls off to the first base side he wasn't in a very good feeling position all he could do is kind of defend himself so Papelbon will face Jose Constanza he's got good speed Braves need base runners let's see if Jose thinks about bunting for a hit Got Hayward in the top of the order next. Jose, a solid year at Gwinnett, hit 276. Strike, even count. But he made him throw him a strike. Good idea. Bouncing ball, right side. At least slides and has no play. Caught the ball, but even if he had caught it and not slid like he did, he had no play at first because Papelbon didn't cover. He stopped, and then when Utley got to the ball, he couldn't restart. Well, there's two of the runners Atlanta needs. Need one more for Justin. Two walks and a hit and a run for Hayward tonight. Keep the line moving, fellas. Down 5-1. Popped up. This one's going to stay in play. Rough behind the dish makes the catch shoulder high, and Hayward is the second out. Oh boy, got a good fastball to hit one that he likes up and out over the plate, but under it. See Jason talking about ball. Yeah, he was. Get out of play. But no such luck. So Upton hits. Justin three for four tonight. Two singles, a double. He's also stolen a base. So
So far tonight the Braves have one run on 10 hits and four walks. The big hit has escaped him to this point and another block by Rupp. His fingernails might be orange but his body will be black and blue. <laughs> That's the truth. Very impressive night. Wasn't asking him about Mac Brown, was he? Probably not. One ball, no strikes. Took something off, and that caught a corner. Mid 70s pitches from Papelbon in the Atlanta ninth. And another one that's popped up right in front of the Phillies dugout, but into the stands foul. It's one and two. That was another one of those pitches where everything, arm action, arm speed, everything just really slowed down. You see it from behind home plate. And com by comparison to when he's throwing a fastball, it's like everything stops on that front foot. When the front foot hits the ground, everything just kind of stops and a real deliberate delivery compared to his fastball. Two and two. Another nice play. Swing and a high fly ball towards center. Hernandez back. Warning track. Wall can't get it. It's gone. An off speed pitch chip, and he may have telegraphed it to Justin again. One more. Hanging breaking ball. Hit it a mile high, and the wind's blowing in, so I wasn't sure this was going to get out or not. Looked like Hernandez was about to make a play on it. Three in the ninth for the Braves makes it a 5 4 score. Watch Hernandez here. He's tracking it all the way. Check the wall. Now turned. And it dropped between the outfield fence and the permanent fence. Get a good pitch, Freddie. He did. Winning run comes to the plate with two outs. Amazing. This team is something else. They've done it all year. Last at bat wins. Comeback wins. A chance to stun the Phillies if Evan Gaddis. Can do some ninth inning magic. 
first four hit game for Justin Upton since May. He had one in April, one in May. We all know how that got his season going. Listen to this place. Rock might have been crossed up. Absolutely, he was. All this started with an infield hit that was right at Papelbon. Yeah, this is 0 for 2 against him. Late on that one, I'm not sure what Evans' plan was there. He wasn't thinking about turning on it, and that wasn't Applebaum's best fastball, I don't think. That was like 92. And it had a little riding action, kind of came in on Evan. At the knees, strike two. You know, these, these last two pitches have been almost like get over fastballs, if you will. They're not really his rockets. No. And that was right there. Ooh. And you're right, Joe. Anywhere from 75 to 86, and he's humped up to 91 or 92. Yeah, and it's not the overpowering fastball that you expect. He may be saving that. The scouting reports 94 95. And it's the ninth rookie in Braves history to hit 20 homers in a year. Number 21, good. Walk us off in the wind column and turn this place upside down. Good take. You've got Johnson on deck. Full count. He is really aiming at fastball. He's not slowing his motion down like he was on the changeup and like he has been doing on the off speed stuff. But it's almost like he's just trying real hard not to make a mistake. Count pitch. Freeman will be running. Ball four. Tying run in scoring position. That is a very good at bat. For this reason. Evan Gaddis, his first year in the big leagues. I mean, he's, he's in a rookie, but he's not a rookie anymore with as many plate appearances as he has enjoyed. But in this situation, you get so caught up. In the noise of the crowd, in the in the moment, wanting to do something great and expand your strike zone and get yourself in trouble. And he was very patient and laid off some borderline pitches and drew a big walk. So Gaddis will be taken down for a pinch runner. B.J. Upton is at first base. Freeman's at second. The beauty of the walk is now a hit could tie the game, and the Braves would have new life. Chris Johnson, two for four lifetime against Papelbon. Strike at 90 miles an hour at the knees. Chris had a really good swing his last time up against Rosenberg when he hit that shot right at Ashy at third base. Oh and two. First hitter he's gotten ahead of in the last six. The outfield arms here pretty average. 
Mayberry in right. Okay. Center fielder Hernandez is a second baseman. Dominic Brown's had a bad foot. Don't know how much he can really charge the ball. Johnson was a hero with two strikes last night. And he fought that one off to keep the game alive. Still 0 and 2. I think you'd have to say he's the best two strike hitter on the team the way he's handled this situation all year long. He improved it again last night. Step out on him. And the Phillies bullpen is getting busy. Justin DeFreitas is up. Braves have got a chance. Chris, the eighth man to hit in the inning. 0 and 2 again. In the dirt. Sharply hit, Rollins keeps it on the infield. Long throw to first is going to be in time. Holy smokes. What a play. A miraculous play by Jimmy Rollins, who has been the star of the game defensively for the Phillies tonight. Instead of the bases loaded for Atlanta, Rollins gets Chris Johnson on a ground out to end the game. The Braves give the Phillies a finish but fall one run short. What a play by Jimmy Rollins to seal the victory for the Phillies. Your final 5-4 tonight. It looked like he was going to get through, and then I thought Rollins was going to eat the baseball, and he came up firing. The throw skipped off the turf. It beat Chris Johnson, and Papelbon survives a very shaky bottom of the ninth inning. And so Atlanta now one game behind St. Louis in the race for the best record in the National League. They'll have to win tomorrow and hope for help from the Cubs if they're to have home field advantage throughout the National League postseason. Wild game tonight. Braves fall a run short.